in the book of Revelation, before John went to heaven and saw the throne of God, we have the Lord talking about overcoming and being clothed in white garments. In Revelation 3, right before that happens, we have the message to the church in Sardis, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received, and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now I'm going to read the message to the church in Laodicea. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would thou wert hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knoweth not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So right after John hears the voice saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, he will come in and sup with me. Well, the Lord's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. So, Revelation 4, after that, he says, after he talked about being clothed in white garments and white raiment, he sees the throne in heaven. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither! and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardius stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne there were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now you carry on and you read the rest of that chapter, and then you come to the next chapter 5, the book with the seven seals, and the um, verse says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor on earth, nor under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon.
the lamb is worthy. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And so, it, then it says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And that's the Messiah, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. He redeemed us by his blood out of every nation and has made unto us, unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. <laughs> the dove just verified that <laughs> flying by. After that, the Lamb is exalted, and, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lived forever and ever so there you have every creature not only every animal and bird but you have all the creatures in the sea that are praising God so that just goes to show they are all in heaven praising God and before his throne he sees them so and then in Revelation 6 we have the rider on a white horse and then we have all of the seals the seal judgments so we have those in white garments already in heaven they've clothed themselves with the righteousness of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world through the Messiah's blood of the covenant the new covenant in the Lord's blood and in the six seals we have the wrath of the Lamb happening. After that, we have God's people being preserved. We have the 144,000 sealed of the tribes of Israel. And we have praise from the great multitude. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. So here's this great multitude before the Lord who's sitting on the throne, and they're all dressed with white robes with palms in their hands. Palm branches, I mean. So... My topic really is about wearing the white clothing, the white garments that's mentioned in Revelation right before John ascends up, which we believe is a rapture event where he saw the throne of God and then he was shown the things that would come after that, which were the seal judgments. But the white garments is what I want to focus on just in this short video because yesterday on August 16th I got a newsletter from some Hebrew teachers in Israel and 
uh, they said that you can share their newsletter and so I thought it was really neat what it says at the end of the letter pertaining to white garments because yesterday August 16th was a special day of love in Israel so let me read the newsletter this is from Orly and Yol. Today, Friday, August 16th, we are celebrating the special day of love called Tubiyav. It started uh, the night before. Tubiyav is a popular date to hold weddings and associated ceremonies coming only a few days after the end of the three-week period from the fast of the 17th Tammuz commemorating the breach of the walls of Jerusalem until Tisha B'Av, commemorating the destruction of the temple in which weddings are prohibited. So during the 9th of Av, when all of that bad stuff has been happening to me during that time period too, um, weddings are prohibited. So you know, as it was in the days of Noah, it says they will be marrying and giving in marriage. So, you know, when the flood comes and takes them all away. So, obviously, during the ninth of Av situation, people are not having weddings. It says, as the Hebrew calendar is lunar, Tubiab occurs in the middle of the lunar month on a full moon. Linking the full moon, Tubiav is characterized with love, fertility, and romance. The first mention of Tubiav is in the Mishnah where it says, attributed to Reben Shimon ben Gamliel, there were no better days for the people of Israel than the 15th of Av and Yom Kippur, since on these days the daughters of Jerusalem go out dressed in white and dance in the vineyards. What they are saying young man consider who you choose to be your wife and according to their Talmud on this day the tribes of Israel were permitted to mingle with each other in Israel nowadays Tubiav is celebrated as a day of love while it is a regular work day music and dance festivals are typically held to celebrate the day Israelis give cards and flowers to their loved ones on Tubiav and the date is popular for weddings. These customs are observed by all segments of Israeli society, whether they consider themselves religious or not. And of course, the church is the bride of Christ, and the bride is in the righteousness of the Messiah, wearing the white raiment, the white clothing, symbolic of being a bride. It's interesting to point out that in this week's Torah portion, Moses cites the verse most famous of all, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And this verse is followed by, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. Now, interestingly, in, in my book, the Lord revealed some things about that verse which are absolutely stunning. But I'll go on to say, in the first verse we proclaim the inclusive unity, oneness of the Almighty, Echad. The second verse speaks of love, Ahava. It's interesting to point out that the numerical value of the word one equals 13 is equal to that of the word love. True love brings the difference so close until it unites them completely. Our sages stated the temple was destroyed because of baseless hatred and it will be rebuilt when baseless love is in place. And maybe we should make a true effort for our youngsters preparing them for their bar mitzvah at the age of 13 to instill in their hearts true love for each other for no reason whatsoever. With that baseless love our society will be so much better. And then below that it says, let's now study a beautiful song called, This Summer You Will Wear White. And I thought that was kind of a stunning thought, you know. Is something going to happen this summer?
where we'll stand before the Lord, we'll hear his voice and the trump of God. Is it preparing for the days before Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets? Well, there's this group, and they're all dressed in white raiment, holding musical instruments. And the song is called, This Summer You Will Wear White. This summer you will wear white and will think bright thoughts. Maybe you'll get a love letter. Maybe we'll make elections. I will vote for you and you will vote for me and together we'll be a majority. If this summer you'll wear white and pray for goodness, this summer you will wear white and go out this way. This summer we'll make a wedding and your part will be with the brides. Wow. I will vote. We will go out of our minds this summer, and after we'll know serenity, a miracle will happen to us this summer, if only you wear white. I will vote. Now my main thought was about the white garments and how that's a picture of being clothed and being raptured when we're changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye when we hear his voice sounding like the the last trump so I just spotted the white dove out here walking around so the bride of the Messiah wears white clothed in the white raiment because we're purified by the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now when John saw the seven churches and the seven angels of the seven churches, he was shown what came after he ascended up and saw the throne of God. And to me, this is a perfect picture of that the Lord is soon coming and we are clothed in white because his righteousness is what purifies us. We're not purified by the ashes of the red heifer. And also I wanted to point out that when they did an experiment on a heifer just the other day in Israel, I was kind of disheartened to hear that it was a sick animal and I believe that the scripture says not to use sick animals to offer up to God when they burned a heifer the other day in Israel it was not a red heifer it was an experiment so here's what the Lord says in Malachi about offering up sick animals the Lord's love for Israel. This is the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated, and I have made his mountains a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. Though Edom may say, we have been devastated, but we will rebuild the ruins. This is what the Lord of hosts says. They may build, but I will demolish. They will be called the land of wickedness and a people with whom the Lord is indignant forever. You will see this with your own eyes, and you yourselves will say, The Lord is great, even beyond the borders of Israel. You know, it kind of mentions the jackals there. The better translation is the desert foxes, which we're actually just on the Temple Mount in my last video I showed that and showed how the foxes were in my book then comes the polluted offerings a son honors his father and a servant his master but if I am a father where is my honor and if I am a master where is your fear of me says the Lord of hosts to you priests who despise my name but you ask how have we despised your name by presenting defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying that the table of the Lord is contemptible. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is it not wrong? And when you present the lame and sick ones, 
Is it not wrong? Why not offer them to your governor? Would he be pleased with you or show you favor? Asked the Lord of hosts. Actually, the King James Version actually says that offering up sick animals is evil. But ask now for God's favor. Will he be gracious? Since this has come from your hands, will he show you favor? Asked the Lord of hosts. Oh, that one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would no longer kindle useless fires on my altar. I take no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will accept no offering from your hands. For my name will be great among the nations, from the rising to the setting of the sun, in every place incense and pure offerings will be presented in my name because my name will be great among the nations says the Lord of hosts but you profane it when you say the table of the Lord is defiled and for its fruit its food is contemptible you also say oh what a nuisance and you turn up your nose at it says the Lord of hosts you bring as an offering animals that are stolen lame or sick should I accept this from your hands asked the Lord but cursed is the deceiver who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but sacrifices a defective animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. Don't offer sick heifers on the altar to the Lord. He is a great king. That's my other message. And the poor animal needed care the poor animal needed love and love is the message from yesterday do you hear the words of the Lord this was not a red heifer it was an experiment and so I asked the Lord to please have mercy on that precious animal that suffered and that God would take it to his heavenly kingdom because he is the God of love. And we need to offer up sacrifices of praise to honor the Lord. If you want to know, you need to give your life to the Messiah, to Jesus Christ. You must believe in his salvation work on the cross, that he died, was buried, and three days he was resurrected to eternal life, and he gives life to us through his Holy Spirit, which we receive through his baptism of the Holy Spirit. And repent of your sins, which means to turn from your old way of life, and believe on the one true God who sacrificed his lifeblood to give us eternal life. And the sacrifices of praise are what he desires. Praise and honor and glory belong to the king. And with that, he gives us the white clothing and the raiment so we'll stand before his throne and be worthy because worthy is the lamb. We're redeemed by the blood of the lamb taken out of the hands of the enemy and placed in the hands of God. My goal is not to chastise for what just happened. My goal is just to say that I knew that that scripture was in the Bible. That the Lord doesn't want sick animals or blind animals being used as sacrifices. Even as an experiment. Can you imagine experimenting on a living creature that has a life? And because we've been clothed with the white garments, that the Messiah purified us, he is more pure than any red heifer. His blood is the blood of the living God that saves us. So we will hear his voice when he descends from heaven with a shout to come take his bride. And this love letter that I got from Jerusalem yesterday said that you will wear white this summer. Is that a precursor to what's about to come? We know that the peace deal of the century is about to come. And we know that all of the other players are in place for the end times 
scenario to play out. But we are looking and watching for the Messiah to descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This summer, we will wear white, and that's something to ponder, because we are only a month and a half away from the Feast of Trumpets, and the bride is making herself ready to receive the bridegroom. And with that, I say, Hallelujah. Please come, Lord Jesus, Messiah Yeshua, Hamashiach of Nazareth. We bless you. We watch for you. We love you. Number 13, <laughs> you're the one true living God. And we're watching for our Lord and Savior to come rescue us. And we pray that we'd be worthy to escape all the things coming upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. So I just wanted to share a few of these things and this letter from Jerusalem saying that we will wear white this summer because we're preparing for the bridegroom to come and we're watching and no matter what is going on in our lives, we are still hoping and watching for the Lord because that's what we're instructed to do in the book of Revelation. That in the book of Revelation, you'll be blessed if you're watching for the Lord. And why will you be blessed? Because you'll be taken. You'll be taken to be in the presence of the throne room of God. So may it be so sooner than later. Amen. And thank you so much for the support of my channel and my work and my book. It takes me four months to see any proceeds from my book. So that's not an instant um, funding, so to speak. But the GoFundMe channel is more um, dedicated to immediate situation. Thank you very much for partnering with me in that and for blessing me as many of you have. And I just pray that God would use my testimony to glorify his name and spread his word throughout the whole earth and spread the gospel message of his glory. In Jesus' name. Look who just hopped up here, my little buddy, Bunnykin. Hi, baby. I love you, baby girl. Coming to see Cammy? <laughs> God bless you, Bunnykin. You are a child of the living God, aren't you? Yeah, it's my precious child of God. You're waiting to hear the trumpet call of God because you know all about the Lord. The Lord says, go into all the earth and tell all creation about Him. And you know about Him, don't you? Well, we're listening for the trumpet. Nibbling on the tree. You're a precious little pal. <laughs> Love you, Bunnykin. <laughs>